Hey guys, it's Chris here from Chris's Creative Life and I create workshops that help you create beautiful projects from start to finish with easy to follow guides. So yesterday I let you guys vote. I had a fun idea um, that had to do with one of the workshop kits from National Scrapbooking Day from close to my heart. Hi Cynthia, thanks for jumping on. So I'm gonna shoot you down and show you my desk at the same time as I'm gonna keep talking for a second. Oh my goodness. Apparently there were lots of layers there. Sorry about that. Hey Tara. Okay, so I let you guys vote. I had already assembled the two circles and patterns workshops, workshop kit layouts from the National Scrapbooking Day. And I had this fun idea. Hey Dolores, hey Tara, I thought that I might take one of those layouts and recreate it in fresh paint because I totally, I love the fact, as soon as I saw this layout, I knew that there was tons of, or workshop kit, I knew there was tons of value in it because you could, you can use circles for anything. I love circles. They are, um, like how they say, you know, you're a certain color kind of person. So when you have to pick between a circle and an oval i would always pick a circle it's just uh i prefer it i think it that it's just something that people definitely have a preference so i let you guys vote so uh, this was layout a and this was layout b and i said i'll come back and i'll recreate it in fresh paint so you guys picked layout eight. It was like a landslide. So, but I just thought I would show you this. So, well, um, before I came on to do this one, I have recreated this one also in fresh paint. So I'm gonna put you down on my desk, shoot myself up into the corner. Hopefully we don't have that many overlays on that camera view, but let's check. No, okay, so this, let me just move this out of my way a little bit here. This was the second layout, and that's not the one you guys picked, so we're not going to do that. But I did take the same pattern plan and recreate it with fresh paint. So I thought I would show you how it turned out. So here is the same layout, but in fresh paint. So... I kept the embellishment kind or type, I guess, the same. So I used the alphas, but I changed the title for this one. The other one said home, right? So it says home, and I changed it to say fun times because I thought that kind of went really well with the fresh paint theme. Um, I'll show you how I swapped out the stamps and colors and everything as we move on to the next layout. Um, I used the black acrylic hearts instead of the stars um, just because I thought it kind of really played up nicely with the heart paper. It And it is. Like, it's so easy. It's such a fun pattern. You could see how you could use it over and over and over again. I added some journal lines with a journaling pen. Okay. So I'll tell you what I did. For this one, literally, I kept everything exactly the same. I used the same pattern. Um, I just swapped out the colors. So I thought I would tell you. Okay. There is now the other one. Okay. So here is the stamp set that comes with that workshop kit, right? Totally usable background stamp. If you don't order this workshop kit, right, we do have other background stamps. We've had them before. You could totally swap it out. This thin cut I thought was super fun. I could see also lots of different things you could use with this. So there's obviously two just plain circles. This one cuts it in half. This one cuts it into quarters. And this one kind of creates like a stained glass look feel so you can imagine there's tons of possibilities for this thin cut so um i use those 
I kept mostly the same embellishment. So on this one, I'm going to actually use exactly the same title. I know you can't see it on the black tray, but it's going to say happy, just like this layout right here. I'm going to use the exact same title, but I'm going to use fresh paint. I did have to swap out some of the flowers because I'm running a little bit low on the black acrylic flowers, but then like I kept the arrows the same. So I have just the same black acrylic shapes. I do have my blue pen because that's what I used to create my journaling lines. Okay, so now let's create it in fresh paint. So I will tell you exactly how I swapped it out because I used exactly the same guide, right? So you can print it off the website, right? So remember, these are still available till the end of May. So I will drop the shopping link if anybody's interested in this, this workshop kit and before the end of May. So this one is the circles and patterns. It creates two layouts, right? So for this piece of paper, I um, swapped it out for fresh paint, obviously. For the rosemary cardstock that they used for the photo mats on the layout, which was the one, the first one I just showed you, I actually used candy apple. Where they used lemonade, I kept it lemonade because that is actually one of the um, coordinating cardstocks. Where they used uh, glacier, I swapped it out for capri, and I actually stamped it with bluebird. So these are the ink, like this is the color palette that I used. So right here I have Capri, Nectarine, Bluebird, and Clover. So on the Capri cardstock, I did stamp it with Bluebird so that you got like a really distinctive difference. You can see here. So here is one piece, that's Capri, right? And I stamped it with Bluebird so you could really see it. Then where there's avocado, I swapped it out for nectarine. Um, where all the lagoon pieces are, I swapped it out for clover. And then the rest are just white daisy. And I left the white daisy, white daisy. Um, okay. So then here we go. So I also did a few things. Somebody said, oh, um, the NSD pages were definitely a labor of love. So one thing I wanted to show you that I did for the layout I'm going to assemble right now. So I pre-stamped it. I pre-cut it and stamped it, obviously, so that you're not having to watch me do all of that. So basically, we're just going to assemble it. But so here you could see on the nectarine, I stamped nectarine, right? So Capri, I did the blue bird nectarine I did nectarine I there's a few pieces of white some of them I stamped in bluebird and then um, their background was lagoon for this layout I'm going to use uh, black so we're going to hear that in one second I have another layer under here so this is the left page, this is the right page. So maybe I should go like this so you can actually see it the way it's supposed to be. So I do have a few measurements written down um, that are gonna help us assemble the layout. So like I said, here are the color palettes and I'll add my swap outs in a comment after the video or up in the description that I'll tell you what was the original. Um, color and what I swapped it out for. But so I wanted to show you this because I think this was part of the problem why people were having a hard time with this layout. And it's one of the cheats that I did after assembling it once the, the first way is I actually now for this one added a layer underneath. So if it was a full circle, I cut a piece of white daisy and I added my two pieces onto the white daisy. Or if it is a semicircle, like here, I actually cut a white daisy semicircle and adhere the two pieces together. Just so that it makes everything a little bit easier to assemble versus sometimes the little um, triangles were a little bit hard or maybe not in the right space. 
So for like this one, you can see in the end, I have eight circles. They're all the same shape. So it makes it, I think it's going to make it easier to line them up. Okay. So let's get started. So I just made a few notes on this layout so that we can see the measurements. So, but you can see like the lemonade worked out perfectly keeping it lemonade. Um, that goes at the top. And it actually all worked out perfectly almost. I swapped out, I didn't just use, um, in this one, they just used the bulk in full bloom. I did swap out a few pieces of the fresh paint for um, some of the other prints, just to make it a little more exciting other than just the bulk, because the bulk is just on this side, it's the hearts and on the other side, it's the paint drips. So lots of the parts of the paint drips are just, they look just like um, Capri cardstock. So I did swap them out. So see, I even used this zip strip, the same size, everything. So I just went through and I swapped out all of the pieces exactly the same. I used exactly the same background stamp. Like I said, I just swapped out the colors of ink. So we have to adhere this white, and I did do the doodling beforehand, <clears throat> just so you guys didn't have to watch that. So same thing here, right? There's two halves, so I adhered them onto a white daisy circle, right? You could even, if you had like lots of discontinued cardstock, just pull out a piece of discontinued cardstock or a piece of cardstock you're not going to use. Sorry, it's a lot of white. Um, the camera doesn't like that. Um, and just add it to the back to make everything a little bit easier because then what you're doing is you're attaching the shapes that are the same size and shape all the time. Okay, let's get this adhered. So the white daisy piece, all the measurements are on the um, workshop directions. So you can find those on the shopping website underneath the kit and you'll see there's like a downloadable guide okay so this piece i think it's 11 and three quarters but i can't honestly remember right or 11 and a quarter so that makes a three eighths of an inch border so i'm just going to add a little tiny piece of adhesive to the back of my or the front of my versamat back of this piece of cardstock so like I said I'm just going to do black instead of their lagoon I'm just going to now put my ruler down and quickly adhere that white and get some color on here for you guys so you can actually see so I did my doodling, like I said beforehand, I just don't want to get anything stuck between the layers there. Okay, so there we go. So then I'm just going to lay my circles down here in the spots they're supposed to go. So, oh my goodness, there we go. Um, now we're going to, I'm just going to lay them down and then we're going to adhere them. So like I said, I just made a few notes here. So this one I'm going to just put in like that. Okay, so they're three quarters of an inch down from the top and three quarters of an inch in same on the bottom so I can go right here so it's three quarters of an inch from the white edge here so I'm just gonna move my little marker over and there we go Okay, so I'm just going to put in my first circle. And 
month if you want to see where it is from the top oops then I just kind of this is too high So you can use, if you don't have this kind of ruler, you can use a quilting ruler. They're awesome because you can see, um, yeah, anything thin would work, right? It just made it a little bit easier so you're not trying to line up half circles or quarter circles all the time, right? So I'm just going to space these. And I'm going to do the two ends first. That's a solid piece. So you can see here. So this is the back side of the bulk of the fresh paint. So it kind of just looked like another piece of Capri. So for some of them, I switched them out for a different piece of paper. So I need to take this little post-it off. Okay, so then you just want to space the, and I wanted this one kind of on the wonky um, side because you can see it's just, you can see the three different um, decoration, uh, three different patterns. You could use anything underneath. Like I said, um, like I have tons of, um, also, if you pay attention to where the middle of your, your six inch mark is, that's also helpful so that you kind of know. Well, actually that's not true because I'm gonna just say, we just did three quarters of the inch from that side and one inch from this side. So it's not actually in the middle. So this one, the, they've got the quarter at the top. So see, it's much easier to just lay in full circles then trying to line up your quarter with your quarter with your half. So <clears throat> that is my fast little hack for how to make it a little bit easier on yourself. Okay, so the bottom row is the same. It's one inch from this side and three quarters from the bottom and three quarters from the side over here. So, and I love that they use like white daisy with the stripes. I'm going to sleep. Excuse me. It's allergy season. Whew. We had a very late spring. So, um, it is just getting bad here right now. So, and I'm just going to. Double check, and I'm pretty close there. Okay, and then so we're going one inch over on this side. And it's actually very little patterned paper. So the stripes are on the two outside pieces. It's a little bit harder when you can't actually put your head right over top of something to make sure it's lined up. So that's why I use the rulers. Like if I could actually stand over top instead of right up here at my desk, it's a little bit easier to see what you're doing. Okay, so we've got another wonky one on its side. So... This just needs to come down a little bit. 
right? And if you look at it, they're repeating these two patterns, right? So there's halves and then quarters and then a full piece. This is the only one that's different. And really, if you are a millimeter out of line, nobody is going to know but you. Okay, so then we are going to put in these pieces. So these are the avocado pieces, right? I swapped them for nectarine. And they're stamped with the little cute dot. And these are two inches from the bottom and an inch and a half from the edge. So right about there. And they're the same measurements for the top and bottom. And then we have this big piece of Capri and it just sits right in the middle. And I think it's kind of fun that literally I didn't um, change up any of the embellishments really other than like a few of them. I think that just said three and three quarters from the bottom. So right here and an inch from the edge. Um, I kept them the same, even like these pieces, right? So they're part of the same as in the original, but I just switched them out. We're gonna use them, and it actually all works out pretty well. Like I said, the only thing I swapped out was I swapped out a few of the extra pieces of um, where they use bulk, I just added a little bit more of the paper. So we have one four by six photo and that is matted on clover. And then this one is exactly the same. It's a three, well, four by three and it's matted on lemonade. I almost forgot my zip strip. So we're gonna add the zip strip right here and it's about a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And you could totally, hey Wendy, you could totally um, splatter up the background um, to make it feel more like fresh paint. I just wanted to show you how you could literally take the exact same set of directions and recreate a whole nother two sets of layouts with them. So now I'm going to add my photo mat in and I'm not actually probably going to pay too much attention other than I'm kind of looking at the photo to see. I'm not going to worry about the exact measurements and they just dovetailed the bottom of this piece. So I did exactly the same thing. Okay, and then I'm going to add this little piece at the top. There. We will tuck the Capri piece underneath. So if you wanted to save it, you could. Okay, there's a little journaling strip just for where you could add like the date or like people's names. 
and that just kind of overlaps a little bit of the photograph and onto the dovetailed piece. Then we have our pieces for over here. So this one just gets tucked underneath. I'm not going to push it all the way down until I add my yellow one and then I can make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay, so literally it is finished. So now we will pull out our acrylic pieces. So like I said, I actually kept this title exactly the same. So I have happy here. I love the black acrylic letters. Well, I, they're all like I love the font of these letters. So there's black and white and um, also wood. You could totally use the white ones on here too. They would be fun with fresh paint. So here's my last letter. Okay, we have a little arrow we're gonna put down here. Right here. And like I said, I do have slightly different flowers because this is what I had left in this bag. Okay, I'm gonna do this one here and then these two up here so when I had to swap out the flowers I was just basically looking for the right size and not so much worrying about um, the actual flower I also have some of these so let's go like this and like this and this one so you could also add like um, little sparkles on the flowers all sorts of fun things okay these are my pieces for my other page I think So I'm just going to add glue dots onto these things and glue them down. Just couldn't see my glue dots there for a second. Slightly panicked, but they are here. I like to adhere the black shapes with glue dots, but you could also use liquid glue if you're a little more patient than me. You could also, in the stars, there are shapes exactly like that, that you could swap out if you would rather have that kind of shape on here instead of the flowers. But I kind of wanted to keep it just as similar as possible to show you how easy it was to swap out. And remind you that there is like value in the workshop kits. There's a reason that they do them the way they do. So I will take some pictures of the two swap out layouts so that you guys can see them. And I'll add them onto the page here. And you can do your H whichever way you want. I kind of like it with the little short piece at the top. And like I, you saw with the other one, right? It was super easy to swap out the title if you didn't want to use the same title. But like I said, for this one, I wanted to try and keep it kind of as almost exactly the same as possible.
So don't forget that they are the workshop kits for National Scrapbook Day, and I think there's five of them are just available until the end of the month. So, ooh, next week. The reason I like to use the glue dots versus liquid glue, especially when I'm just doing like a live video, is that I don't have to wait for the adhesive to dry. But like I said, you could easily use glue if you have a little bit longer to let it dry. So there we go. The left hand page is done. Okay, so now we will go to the right hand page. And same thing, I'm just gonna have a little sip of water. So the left hand side, or the right hand side is actually easier than so here, I'll just show you again, it compared to the original, right? Like, I think it's a super fun exercise to kind of show you exactly the difference. Okay, so now let's do the right hand page. So we're doing this one, but we're gonna do the fresh paint one, right? So same thing, the first thing I have to do is adhere the background. And I did exactly the same thing. I put them all on semicircles to try and make it a little bit easier. So let's just move our pieces out of the way and it's gonna make the camera go wonky. So I'm gonna try and leave this here and see if that's helpful. So like I kept the mats the same, right? And the lemonade was the lemonade. So, and my journaling box, I just used my blue Le Pen. And I swapped out, they had a little piece of white daisy that was snapped just with little dots. And I just stamped, I swapped it out for a piece of pattern paper just to make it a little more interesting um, because it was sitting on my desk. So, I'll just move these over and try and keep them in order so that okay so same thing right I have the white daisy and there's a three eighths of an inch border on this one so I'm just trying to keep enough color on camera there that we don't lose focus. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to, I still have that little tiny bit of adhesive and that's more than enough to make my background not move around on me. So I'm just gonna lightly touch it in the middle, but it's also enough that I can peel it off and it'll be fine. I'll just take my rub and erase to it when I'm done and it'll be clean and good as new. So three eighths of an inch border. It's sometimes hard to see on the black, on black, with all my lights on me. So there we go. Okay, so then the easiest way to do this one is like they actually have you line up the um, circles first and adhere them down. I'm gonna do things in slightly a different order so I'm going to actually adhere the two big pieces to the layout first. So when you look at them, this, this green piece, which we're swapping out for the paint piece, is an inch and a half 
and one inch from the bottom. So that's what we're actually gonna do first. So I'm gonna do it an inch and a half from the outer edge and, no, an inch and a half from the white edge. So there. and one inch from the very bottom of the layout. So right there. So the funny thing about this one Yes, it's much easier to put the big pieces on first because this piece is slightly longer than the other piece we're going to put on. And so we're going to add this one now. And like I said, I think this makes a big difference too. So this one is an inch and a half from the white and one and a quarter from the top edge right on the black. And I think that's also part of the reason that people were getting confused with um assembling it because the measurements weren't consistent right it's not this much from the white edge and then this much from the white edge right so i think that was part of the reason why it was a little more difficult than it needed to be so did i say one and a quarter from the top and that seems about right so then everything goes on easily from there right so I'm just gonna put my two bottom um, quarters in first so and they both happen to be lemonade and then I'm gonna put my top pieces in and then just set my other ones in. So, like I said, it's actually an optical illusion, right? You've got the same number of semicircles, but um, you don't have the same space on either side. This side has less space than the other one. So, you want to do your top and your bottom and then space the middle pieces out just so that they look like they're even and it like I said it doesn't really matter nobody's gonna know if you're out by I want to say a millimeter because I'm Canadian and that's how we measure things but an eighth of an inch okay You can always tell that I don't use imperial measurements if you ever try if you ever hear me trying to figure out a measurement on the fly. Because it's just not how I think. Okay. So like how fun is that? I really I think this is fun. Okay. So then I'm gonna put in my top piece and same thing, space them out evenly. I know it's fun and I think that um, people had a hard time with fresh paint when they first saw it because it is it's very loud or um, maybe not what you were expecting but I actually think it's so versatile you could use it in so many different ways okay 
So now these ones have to be slightly spaced out just a little bit more, right? Because you do have a quarter of an inch difference. So it is, you can see, you can't tell that they're not, like unless you're actually looking at it, you can't tell that they're not exactly at the same height, right? There is a little bit of a difference between them because there is the difference in the two heights of the papers. But how fun. I think you could do the same thing with Tutti Fruity, right? Like you could do the same thing with some of the papers from the core. Because circles and parts of circles are so versatile. Okay, so now we are in the final stretch here. I'm going to though lay this piece in. Hey guys, sorry, Facebook cut me off for some reason. They said there was some sort of error and it won't let me get back on. So I'm just gonna record this and I'm gonna upload it. Um, so I just thought I would finish up the layout really quickly so you could see the second part. And if I can, I'll try and mesh the two videos together later, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so all I've done, so, oh, let me put myself in the corner. Okay, so I have added now the photo mats. I did all the other parts in the beginning. So like I said, we'll just finish this up and I will try eventually to put the two pieces together, but I'll just call one video one and video two. Okay, so I've adhered the photo mats. Now we're going to add the embellishments and I just need to find, I should have somewhere here, one more piece, a white daisy semicircle. So we will add this at the top, just tucked behind. So they added some of these behind. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. There's three of them. And then we'll add our black acrylic pieces. Okay, I'm just gonna bring back into the camera view the um, original. Okay, so we have a little arrow for down here. And then we have the partial little arrow pieces. Okay, and I'm just gonna again add these just with glue dots.
there we go okay so I think that turned out pretty cute so like I said really what I wanted to show you was just because something starts out one way you don't have to keep it that way and that there's value in the um, workshop and that you can use it over and over again it's the same as my workshops right if you think about it you can use my workshops over and just swap out all of the um, papers if you want so that was the one that you guys voted on and then like I said I did do the other one so here's the original of that one And here is the remake. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Sorry about whatever happened with Facebook, but uh, we are playing in their platform, so they get to make the decision. So I'll try and upload this now, and I hope you guys all have a great day. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.